we're going to be checking out this video. This is from uh, YouTube user Shah. And it says, Dragonflight Beta, the Battering Ram, my favorite warrior build. So I'm very curious because this was post nerf. I'm pretty sure that this is post warrior nerf because the warrior has already been heavily nerfed in Dragonflight. Apparently, according to Blizzard, it was overperforming. I will be the judge of that when I play Dragonflight, right? But Blizzard already said, no, no, it's too powerful. Gotta nerf it. Gotta nerf it. It's too, too much. Gotta nerf it. So, you know, uh, we are going to check this out and see what the warrior is like. This is from Shah. Hey guys, what's going on? Shaw here, and today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Protection Warrior. Now, this is so far my favorite build on beta up to this point. Blizzard, with their last build, actually put out a few nerfs that was affecting yep. a lot of damage centered around the ability Revenge, and as well as some of the rage generation. So going into this build, I was a little nervous, but Warrior seems to be better than ever. Wait, is this def this seems like default UI, actually. I don't know about this. Is this default unit frames? Because I know that this is default now. And this is also default. Okay, it does have um, recount or details or whatever the hell this is. But apart from that, I think this, mm, I don't know about these plates. I don't know about these plates. I know that it's, I know this got details and recount. Uh, this is, this might be default. I think this is default. Chat is default. Th Cause like all of this, this is no longer bartender. This is actually default now. Uh, the, this UI seems about right. Uh, this is probably focus target. I would imagine the map also seems right. The buff seems about, my big question is, uh, the plates. I don't know if the plates are default cause they have debuffs. So I don't know if those are default, but yeah, everything else is default, which is really nice. You can, you can do a really nice UI with, uh, with, uh, Dragonflight. Seems to be better than ever. Now I will say while damage is always fun to see a tank do, and that is sometimes why a tank might be fun to some people. The reason why this build has been so good so far is actually the fluidity as well as the adaptability of the talent tree. So join me today while we walk through exactly what the warrior tree has going on and how it plays in dungeons. Let's dive in. Of course, of course, we have your typical disclaimer for the talent build. Things are always subject to change when yep. addressing beta and there are- Let me see what actually, what build he's going for. Okay, so he's not taking Ravager or anything like that. <clears throat> Is this the Ren build? Yeah, I think, yeah, he does have blood. I think this is the Blood and Thunder one. Bro! He didn't take Shockwave. Interesting. Like, by default, I took Shockwave, because I've always liked Shockwave. What? Stormbolt? Huh. I'm assuming this is Bounding Stride. It has to be Bounding Stride. So he's going deep into the bleeds, which is something that I like. I like the idea of going deep into bleeds. I did my build also, the, the first build that I've done also went deep into bleeds. He's got the charge. That crazy new warrior charge that they're getting with both the buffs. Okay. What's beautiful about the warrior tree and what is absolutely gold standard for almost, this should be the case for every class is the trees allow for a ton of different builds. I have had a lot of warriors come through both my stream chat and in Discord and on YouTube. Recommend running a ton of different stuff, whether it's different capstones like Spear of Bastion or Shockwave, or things like Sidearm, or running Ravager in the actual spec tree. There are so many builds that I've, they're all fun to play, they're, it's flexible, and of course once we can actually start testing harder content, we're going to be able to figure out one build is going to be great for this dungeon or this raid fight, but then we have a totally different build for another raid fight or based on the affixes. The warrior tree is pretty much, I would say, like perfect. There's obviously maybe some bugs and some tuning that has to be addressed, but for the most part, that's why the tree is so amazing. So this is the build that I have been running, and it's probably by far my favorite so far. You have a good balance of rotation, 
and cooldowns. There's a lot of synergy and there's a great feedback loop, both with your mitigation as well as your offensive toolkit. Let's quickly kind of go through exactly what's going on. If we step over to the class tree, of course, the idea with this build is to optimize damage. And the reason why we're optimizing damage is because it's going to feed into our defensive. No Zerker Rage? Zerker Rage breaks fear, though. I don't know how important that's going to be. Hit in a bit, but let me get to that in a second. So the idea with this is let's try to focus on a little bit of leech. We're obviously going to be playing the Thunderclap bleed build, which has been of course. pretty popular on beta. I know there are builds that don't focus on bleeds, like things like Rend and Blood Surge. But in this build in particular, we're going to be focusing on that. So we're grabbing something like Siphoning Strikes. And later in the tree, we're also grabbing something like One-Handed Specialization. These two things together are giving us a flat 10% leech. 10% leech. Insanely good for warriors. Now, of course, lower level content, we're not taking as much damage, but in theory, when we do start taking damage, we have things like Indomitable, we have things like Ignore Pain that are creating like a shield, and- <laughs> I hate Ignore Pain. I hate it. Give me a Roic Strike. Leech is gonna come in handy, especially when you, you know, bake in the fact that we're, you know, applying roar that we have a little bit of burst damage that we have things like rend and blood surge and our deep wounds all doing damage constantly the leech aspect of this build is really really fun and i'm hoping they don't touch it but i'm sure it's going to get nerfed especially once we start testing the plus now the no not again dude it's, it's it's real like warrior is in that position where they're going to nerf it again and they're going to make it like completely and utterly useless that's always the fate of the warrior the warrior is there to be blizzard's nerf punching bag they just straight up nerf them non-stop the idea of this build is we're grabbing some different revenge talents things like frothing berserker which is going to give us rage refund we're going to grab things like barbaric training which is going to give us amplified revenges and of course things like seismic reverberation which is going to when we're hitting multiple targets revenge is going to hit an additional time and then the bulk of the build is actually going to come down towards the middle and then swinging left on the tree so we're things like seeing things like thunderclap and of course blood and thunder, blood and thunder. Sure that we're spreading our rend now if you're i wouldn't play blood and thunder if you're not playing rend but in this build in particular, Blood and Thunder is the way to go. And now we're maneuvering our way down to the left side of the tree to grab things like Armored, Armored to the Teeth and things like Avatar and, of course, Unstoppable Force, giving us more Thunderclaps while in that Avatar window and, of course, reducing the cooldown, which means that we can apply Ren. So in larger pulls, Unstoppable Force tends to typically be the play, especially when you look at the damage breakdown. Thunderclap makes up a good bit of our damage. It's actually typically my top damage. I am playing Thunderous Roar, but there are arguments to be made for Spear of Bastion, and again, that's the beauty of this tree. You can drop Thunderous Roar completely, and some other of these talents to try to pick up Shockwave. If See, you that's what I was ability. doing. You can also play. Spear. I was running Shockwave instead of Thunderous Roar. I realized that Thunderous Roar synergizes better with the bleeds. It's just, dude, the utility of just backing up a little bit, popping off a Shockwave, boom, everything is stunned. Ah. Yes, yes. Fear of Bastion and Shockwave if you want utility. You can play Shockwave and Thunderous Roar if you would like. That's what I love about the capstone of the tree. The, the warrior has just an excellent choice and a lot of flexibility. You can drop like Barbaric Training for Sidearm for more passive damage. If you need a little bit more group utility, you can eventually you can go Sidearm into Commanding Shout instead. And then you can come down here to grab Shockwave and you can grab your Avatar. And you can still grab Thunderous Roar and go one-handed spec with some room to spare. So there's a lot of flexibility in this tree and that's kind of the beauty of it. And that's what I'm really trying to stress. Now moving over to the spec tree. The focus here is really on rage generation and kind of burst cooldown DPS, maintaining avatar, stuff like that. So there's a lot of cool feedback loops that are going on here. We're going to be going to both sides of the tree, and then we're going to be focusing on the left hand slash middle capstones. Things like last stand paired with unnerving focus and bolster give us this nice little reduced cooldown on our last stand. And last stand is going to increase our rage generation by 50% during that. 50 and it's seconds. going to have block, and it's going to give right? Shield block. So this yeah. is going to give us a little bit of time to recover our shield block charges because, of course, with lower amounts of haste, our shield block charges are a little take a little bit longer to recover. We're also going to be grabbing things like Brutal Vitality, which adds our damage adds to our ignore pain, which is insanely nice because this what this does is, in, at least in this level content, it's adding 
to the ignore pain shield so we don't have to keep reapplying that shield over and over again so we're allowed to spend a little bit more rage on revenge which of course is feeding into the frothing berserker refund and that's a, resulting in more damage and just kind of more overall rage spending and lastly we are grabbing bloodborne down here which is going to increase the bleed effects um, by about 30%. Now, you can drop one of these if you'd like to just run the 15% damage increase on those bleeds, and maybe you could pick up something like Ravager, you could pick up something like Battle Scarred Veteran, or you can pick up things like The Wall or Unbreakable Will, both all very cool talents. And that's what I love about this tree so much is that there are so many options and flexibility to kind of like make little adaptive changes to whatever type of content you're doing. Now, of course, this is again in heroic content, so it's hard to test the survivability aspect, but when it comes to synergy, this is just a nice little build. And then going down the middle of the tree, we are grabbing things like Rend. We're grabbing Blood Surge for the Rage Generation. We have Shield Wall and Anger Management to reduce the cooldown of both Shield Wall and Avatar. And then, of course, we're seeing the things like Outburst, Indomitable, and Booming Voice. This is such an attractive capstone area of the tree. I don't know how you would ever not play with these. Obviously, Thunderclap, Shield Slam, generating more Rage, granting Ignore Pain, and doing more damage. Insane. Obviously, healing for the Rage you spend being a rage based funnel build you're getting a lot of rage therefore you're spending a lot of range and you're getting refund on rage so it's just like turning into healing again incredible and of course booming voice i remember indomitable not being very good in the previous trees but in, in the previous expansions i mean i don't know how good it'll be here this is allowing you to deal more damage it's generating rage but in here we also have 10 percent leech so amazing and now kind of the the most enjoyable part about this build is kind of like the burst DPS you're gaining from things like Shield Charge, Battering Ram, and Champion's Bulwark. So the idea of this build is to go in, Avatar Demo Shout, get your Renda going, get your Thunderclap, and then you go for a very juicy fucking Shield Charge that just nukes everything. Uh, and obviously it does a lot of damage to your primary target. It also stuns your primary target. It increases your critical strike chance and damage by 15%, super fun. So then you can go, at this point, you go into a thunderous roar for burst, and it's increasing your auto attack speed, which results in more rage, which results in more shield slams, which results in more rage. And it's just this very nice little feedback. And of course, the shield charge will also give you shield block. So you can utilize this as another way to have that better off time. So that's where the min maxi nature of like having weak ores and obviously practicing the build comes from. So he said weak ores. No. As someone who doesn't play WoW, I gotta ask, what is with all the warrior hate I hear about? Is it actually that bad or is it a meme? Dude, listen. The the thing that I always say about warriors is that at the start of every expansion, pretty much since I don't know, the Burning Crusade. Well, I guess in Wrath they're okay. But like Pretty much after Wrath, at the start of every expansion, Warriors are fundamentally worthless. In the last two expansions that I've played, which were Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands, Warrior was beyond worthless. It was straight up not viable to actually take into higher level content. Because a lot of times people will be like, oh, Warrior is fine, and they're running fucking heroics. And it's like, bro, any class can run heroics, duh. It's like, now take that warrior and take him on a plus 10. Good luck. At the start of Shadowlands, go ahead, take a warrior to a plus 10. Have a good time. Unless everybody's like overgeared out the ass, that warrior is an amazing liability. And like I already said my story about Battle for Azeroth, the start of Battle for Azeroth, people would straight up not take warriors into Mythic Pugs because like, no, I want a Blood DK or a Monk because warriors were, again, straight up not viable. It's like, that's the problem with warriors. They're, they're generally not very viable at the start of expansions because warrior is supposedly the class that scales the most off of gear, which means usually they're a little bit better off later in the expansions, but a lot of times, not even that. It's just traditionally other classes are better. It's not even that warriors are bad, right? It's that other classes are so much better that there's no reason to bring one. That's the problem, but yeah. I know I sound super excited because I am. This build is really fun. Probably going to get nerfed, let's be honest, but let's jump into a Brackenhide Hollow and just take a couple looks at some of these different pulls and just how insane this damage profile is. Let's go. So right here, we're finishing up a pull, and <laughs> while our healer is DC, that's not going to stop me from continuing my pull. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is apply our rend to make sure I'm able to- Wait, bro. What do you mean pull without a healer? You're a warrior. You can never do that. <laughs> Wait, what? Let's spread it around with some thunderclaps. We put up our shield block. Q, look at this shit. 
Uh, while we pop avatar, we pop demo shot, we we shield charge and look at his health. What the fuck? And we use that buff from it to get a massive thunderous roar, which puts us all the way up at 150k burst DPS. And this is pretty much able to be done roughly every minute because of all the different cooldowns that we're working with. But we're pretty much going to be sending things on cooldown. So it's you look at his health. It doesn't go down. <laughs> the fuck this is like final fantasy 14 warrior extremely extremely fun even without all of those cds up i'm still able to maintain like 80k dps which is just absolutely bonkers right now again the excitement about this build is the synergy but it's also you know partly the damage i will admit being able to just out dps everyone the whole dungeon is kind of cracked i will be honest though i spent a lot of time during this um, during the last night or the last evening or today, basically before I started recording this, gearing the absolute living shit out of this character, I have basically Dude, his health does not go down at all. Outside of like maybe like I think my cloak and one of my rings, I'm also like fully enchanted, fully decked out. I have all my battle potions. He's not even using ignore pain at all. all. Gemmed up and everything, so I do a lot of damage because I spent the time actually trying to get that gear. And you're gonna see quick uh, in a short. Tuga Lord, I already said I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing Dragonflight. Like that's just gonna happen. Like Dragonflight is gonna happen. Second here, I end up actually doing a ton of damage with things like a Helm effect, with an enchant, and with a like file slash potion. So our healer finally left the group, and actually we ended up getting automatic Jack into our dungeon run. So. What's up, Jack? He's a, an outstanding healer main. A lot of you might know him from, you know, him casting the MDI and stuff like that. So really cool down to earth guy, but it was kind of cool to see him in this dungeon. So let's quickly jump to the end and we'll talk about the damage breakdown. So the overall damage for this dungeon is... Look, look at that thunderclap damage, baby! Mm. Vicious! Fucking vicious, dude! Look at that thunderclap damage. 10.7 million damage right there. Dude, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I miss Heroic Strike more than... It's like the Heroic Strike synergy was just so good. Heroic Strike was just such a good skill. Like, why'd they gotta remove Heroic Strike? It's... I wish we had Heroic Strike back and get rid of Nor Pain so much better something like this we see thunderclap revenge followed by a lot of our bleed dots <laughs> then followed by shield slam of course closer for sh shield charge and melee of course i should point out some of the more glaring he's got devastator uh, nice. people might have questions about so obviously bloody vengeance this is a helmet buff from our blacksmithing crafting profession so this is just doing an absurd amount of damage i can't imagine it'll go live like this but still really fun to play with basically every time something damages me it's applying a bleed to said target that just deals damage over time and it obviously is insane. I wonder if that's scaling with the skill that also increases all of his bleed damage. I mean, the average hit is about 5k per tick with some of my crits being obviously like 10k. Glacial Fury is actually a consumable so that's probably standing out pretty heavily here and then of course shield charge. This thing is a massive fucking nuke. I love hitting this button and it's so fun in this build in particular. But again, our Thunderclap and Revenge damage is a little healthier. Our uptime on Ignore Pain was about 87%, which is pretty solid. This is going to happen whenever we happen to get Outburst or apply it ourselves, and it's getting extended by some of the different talents that we use. So Ignore Pain is really easy to have, and Shield Block uptime is about 54%. Again, I'm not hitting it as frequently, mainly because it's low-level content. So until we start being able to test high-level content like Mythic Plus or Raid... Where it's that is a lot of uptime on Ignore Pain. I didn't see him press the Ignore Pain button that much. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. I wonder if, if, I wonder if he was getting it through procs or something, because there are some procs in the tree that give you Ignore Pain. Ascension, thank you very much for being grossly with us for four months. Tip of the hat. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really going to be hard to get a grasp on exactly how much shield block uptime we have. And, of course, without weak ores, it's a little hard to keep track of shield block charges without having to, like, look down at my action bar every time and maximizing that along with things like Last Stand and the Talent Bolster. So, extremely fun build to play with the shield charge. It's absolutely fun to have, like, a little AoE nuke 
we're opting out of a lot of the right hand side talents now i have seen builds with ravager which i just don't like the button bloating i don't like when we have a ton of random buttons to hit that are cool, either whether it's cooldown based or defensive based or even rotational ravager is more of a cooldown but having an extra button to hit just it kind of feels clunky i like to just really go in and get rolling right away and having sustained damage as a tank always feels better than having to rely on cds to do a lot of damage this is why guardian druid is such a anomaly of a tank because it's one of the only tanks currently on live servers that really focuses on the incarnation cooldown and outside of that you do almost no damage so more preferably we like to actually have you know sustained so give this build a shot obviously it's going to there's no way this doesn't get nerfed there's no way and most of it stop talking about it then i don't want it to get nerfed god damn it it's actually coming from non you know functional things in the warrior toolkit we're seeing things like basically item effects and you know potions and enchantments making up a fair bit of our damage here so unfortunately i not unfortunately um it would be nice to see these get nerfed now i all i'm a big advocate for having you know things like potions and different weapon effects ha do a lot of damage but blizzard unfortunately learned their lesson i think in bfa when our like azurite traits and our essences were doing most of our damage and it really didn't feel fun because you were really playing like your essences and not your class very much Regardless, so though this build is extremely fluid it's very fun i it's hard to hard to point out the downsides of the spec mainly because we're taking pretty much no damage like the overall healing was mostly me automatic jack in this uh, automatic jack was in this dungeon so um that was fun but he almost had to do no healing either because i just like it didn't take any damage he actually healed he healed everyone more than me that's that's kind of crazy there's no way right, like there's no way that blizzard is going to let warriors have that level of independence such things are limited to things like death knights and paladins warriors will never be allowed to have this much power it's i don't believe it'll ever happen like this is a hundred percent getting nerfed into the ground which makes me sad because like i'm seeing the potential of what this class could be and it's never going to this is, this is almost like, you know, listen, let me tell you what this is, right? Let me tell you what this is re real quick. I'm going to show you guys what the situation is that we're dealing with right now, okay? Uh, and now let me just see this. Okay, I think we have I think we have the the situation here. Okay, I think I have everything that I need. So listen, oh what the fuck? That's not good. Wait, give me a second. It's perfect, just like that. Now this one. Okay, so listen, this is what the warrior looks like now. In Dragonflight beta, right? Really cool fucking red sports car. Let's go, baby. This is the warrior right now on the beta servers, okay? This is my World of Warcraft experience, by the way. This is the warrior right now. Looks really fucking good. Gorgeous lines, right, guys? Am I, am I, am I right? Like, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? L look at that. Doesn't that look like a good, a go goddamn good vehicle? It's like an amazing vehicle, right? Looks like it'll be a ton of fun to drive that thing, right? This is what it looks like right now. Let me tell you what it's going to look like when the game actually launches. Okay? This is the warrior when the game actually launches. All right? The image doesn't even have resolution. That is by design because Blizzard doesn't give a fuck. So it's like, listen, this is what the warrior is going to be like when the game actually launches. Okay? This is what you get in the beta. This is what you get when the game launches. That's how it's going to be. It's 100% going to be like that. That's my life with Warrior, dude. Every time I play Warrior, not viable. This is just like that. Just like this car is not viable. It doesn't even have a fucking engine. 
So yeah, all classes are that way currently. Lies and slander, I don't believe you. I, I bet you Paladins are going to be the absolute giga chads. They always are. It's going to be Paladins and Death Knights and Monks. That's what it's all about. Paladins, Death Knights, and Monks. Blizzard sweethearts. What's wrong with the yellow car? The fact that it's got no engine. Time, I can't stress it enough. This build really comes down to not only the damage, but the fluidity of the spec and the adaptability, of course, in the talent tree. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have been showing me on Twitch. And of course, huge shout out to all my patrons who support me with their actual real life money. It means the world to me. It provides me coffee so I can actually sound energetic sometimes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what tank you guys want me to do next. And I will catch you all in the next one. Take care. That was a pretty good video. I liked it. It's a damn shame that our shit's going to get nerfed beyond belief, as always. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, go in there, leave a like. As, as I always say, do remember, do not just leave a life, can leave. So if you are going to go in there, go in there, leave the video playing in the background, or go there later, watch the video. Do not just leave a like and leave, because that's actually bad for the algorithm. But uh, yeah, pretty good.